On Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey's website, there is a list. The top 10 cool things we do for our animals. It seems somewhat out of place on the website for a company that the USDA has cited numerous times in the past decade for its treatment of animals. Since the circus was coming to town, PETA TV decided to put the list to the test. Number one, provide them with a safe and nurturing home. Like people, a wild elephant herd places top priority on providing a safe and nurturing home for its children. In this footage from Africa, a baby elephant has become trapped in the mud. Working as a team, mother, sisters, aunts, and cousins work to free her. In the wild, elephant babies stay with protective, extended families such as this one for at least 15 years. Wrinkling baby elephants, according to their website, are taken from their natural mothers at age two, while still nursing to, and I quote, lay the groundwork for performing. Wrinkling trainer Troy Metzler, seen here in 2000, is a part of the team that lays this groundwork. But sometimes this forced weaning leads to tragedy. In 1998, Ringling paid $20,000 to settle USDA charges of failing to provide veterinary care for a dying baby elephant named Kenny, who was a little younger than the baby elephant being beaten by Troy in this footage. Kenny was forced to perform despite obvious illness, and was found dead in a stall in a pool of bloody diarrhea. The baby in Africa was eventually freed by her family, but another Ringling calf, Benjamin, was not so lucky. Baby Benjamin, drowned in a small pool while trying to escape the pokes and prods of a handler chasing him with a bullhook. Benjamin died alone. No one had taught him to swim, and there was no herd of concerned relatives working to save him. Number two, ensure they get a nutritious diet. Elephants in the wild thrive on fresh vegetation. Ringling's elephants are primarily fed a bland diet of hay and grain. The only time they're able to forage for fresh vegetation is as they are herded from train boxcars to performance arenas. But handlers stop this most natural of behaviors by pushing them away or beating them with bull hooks. Number three, groom them daily. This is undercover footage of a wrangling grooming session. Keep in mind that despite their size, the elephants being beaten here are still just babies. Number four, train them in ways that meet both their physical and mental needs. Ringling claims to have been caring for animals for 130 years. For many of those years, this care has been meted out by a family dynasty headed by patriarch Gunther Gable Williams. But it's not just tigers and elephants Gunther uses his whip on. In 1994, he was arrested in St. Louis and charged with disturbing the peace. Gable Williams, it seems, had screamed at a police officer and threatened the officer with a whip because officers were giving traffic tickets to circus customers. Number five, give them complete medical care. According to Ringling's Director of Veterinary Care, Dr. William Lindsay, eight elephants at Ringling facilities in Florida were diagnosed during the 1990s with a strain of TB that is communicable to human beings. This diagnosis has led the Florida Department of Agriculture to place Ringling's Williston, Florida elephant facility under quarantine. TB is just one of the reasons why 18 elephants have died in Ringling's care since 1990. Number six, use innovative technology to improve overall health care. This is an example of the advanced technology that Ringling claims it uses on its animals. It's called a bull hook. A bull hook is nothing more than a steel club with a sharpened tip at the end. Ringling animal trainers use the bull hook like Barry Bonds uses a baseball bat. Number seven, keep them fit through exercise. Ringling's exercise regime hours a day in chains. In 1993, Ringling Brothers helped defeat legislation in California that would have limited the number of hours per day that elephants could be chained. Ringling wrote, chaining is a safe and acceptable means of protecting both the elephants and the public. Number eight, enrich their lives through performance. In nature, bears don't ride bicycles, elephants don't stand on their head, and a tiger would never hop on his hind legs. It takes total intimidation to force them to perform these acts under the big top. It makes sense then that in 2000, Ringling strenuously opposed wording in USDA draft policy that read, hot shocks, shocking collars, or shocking belts should not be used for training or to handle the animals during exhibition. Number nine, speak up for the conservation and preservation of all animals. 44 of Ringling's current elephant herd of endangered Asian elephants were taken from the wild in traumatic capture expeditions, where baby elephants were rounded up using jeeps and guns. Even though Asian elephants are protected by international and federal laws, the trade continues. In the year 2000, 
poachers killed 60 free-roaming female elephants so that their babies could be collected and sold to the entertainment industry. The still-nursing elephants, all under the age of three, refused to abandon their dead mothers, even attempting to suckle from their corpses. Singer Dave Matthews has just signed a petition asking Swaziland to call off just such captures in Africa. Number 10. Love them. There's an old saying, if you love someone, set them free. Homes for animals liberated from circuses, such as the Elephant Sanctuary in Tennessee, provide a place where former circus captives can practice a new trick for the first time in their lives, simply being elephants.